In this video, I would like to talk about the notion of homeomorphisms, which I have mentioned in an earlier video um, as the notion of isomorphism between topological spaces. So let me just remind you of the definition. A continuous map F between two topological spaces X and Y is a homeomorphism which I'll usually just write homeo if it's invertible to bijective and its inverse f inverse is also continuous so if two topological spaces admit a homeomorphism between them then they're essentially the same topological space this is like an isomorphism in the category of topological spaces let me give you an example to show why this condition that the inverse is continuous is a necessary condition to put into the definition so let's consider the interval between 0 and 2 pi where I keep 0 but I don't keep 2 pi so it's a half open interval and I give it the subspace topology from the real numbers and then I'm going to write down a map from this to the circle that sends the point theta in this interval to e to the i theta thinking of the circle sitting inside the complex numbers so map f now any unit complex number can be written as e to the i theta for some theta between 0 and 2 pi and it can be done so in a unique way if that's really between 0 and 2 pi without being 2 pi now, there's a unique angle between 0 and 2 pi as long as you don't allow 2 pi so that means f is a bijection And it's continuous because the exponential map is continuous. Um, so is it a homeomorphism? Well, no, because this is an interval that looks like that. And this is a circle that looks like that. So those are not the same topological space. So we haven't actually proved this yet. Um, the proof of this involves the fundamental group, so that the fundamental group of the circle is the integers the fundamental group of the interval is trivial um, but we're going to show that they're not homomorphic so it's bijective and continuous but not a homo homeomorphism so you have to be careful but there's a very nice theorem which means you don't have to be too careful so let x be a compact space and y be a Hausdorff space then any continuous bijection f from x to y is actually uh, a homeomorphism And in this previous example, this guy, this uh, interval, is not compact. So this theorem doesn't apply, and this map is not a homeomorphism. 
So let's prove the theorem. What we need to show is that the inverse of f is continuous. And to do that, we need to show that the pre-image of an open set in x under f inverse is open. That is, f inverse inverse in u is open in y for all u open in x. Now f inverse inverse of u, it's got a different name, it's f of u. So we need to show that the image of an open set is open. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove that the complement of the image is closed. So here's how we go. So we take u open in x. Then its complement x minus u is closed by definition in x and x is compact by hypothesis and we had a result in the video on compactness that said a closed subset of a compact space is compact We also had a result in the same video that said the image of a compact set under a continuous map is compact. So f is continuous. So, um, oh, sorry, it's a uppercase f, isn't it? So that tells us f of x minus u is compact. Now, in the video on Hausdorff spaces, we proved that a compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. So, um, because Y is Hausdorff, move down a little bit. This tells us that this set is closed. And not too hard to convince yourself, this means that f of u, which is now y minus f of x minus u, is open. Right, because this is a closed set, so its complement is open. Okay, and that's what we wanted to prove. So if you have a compact space mapping to a Hausdorff space and that map is a continuous bijection, then actually it's a homeomorphism. So let's see an example of this being applied to identify two topological spaces. So we saw that the two-dimensional torus can be thought of as a subset of three-dimensional space. Oops, that's R3. But we also saw, or I claimed, that it can be embedded into four-dimensional space as the subset of points uh, cos, theta, sine, theta, cos, i, sine, by uh, these two guys are coordinates that live in uh, zero to two pi. So 
So um, let me let me call this torus over here T, and the torus in 4D I'll call T prime. And the claim is these two guys are homeomorphic, and I'm going to prove this by showing they're both homeomorphic to S1 times S1. So first of all, I need a map which is a continuous bijection from S1 times S1 to, say, T prime. And that map is going to be the one that sends e to the i theta, comma, e to the i phi to cos theta sine theta is cos phi sine phi. I remember we saw that cos theta sine theta, etc., were continuous functions of, you know, when, when thought of on a, on a circle. So this is a continuous map. And I claim that S1 times S1 is a compact space. And that's because, well, S1 is a subset of R2. It's a closed and bounded set. So by the heine borel theorem, it's compact. And this is a product of compact spaces. So by Tikhonov's theorem, it's compact. This guy, so let me write that down, this is compact. This guy, T prime, is a subspace of a Hausdorff space, and it's not too hard to convince yourself that a subspace of a Hausdorff space is Hausdorff. So this is a continuous bijection between compact and Hausdorff spaces, so this is a homeomorphism. So I need to do something similar here. And the same argument will apply, provided I can write down a suitable continuous bijection. So um, how would I do that? I have to be a bit explicit about what this thing actually is. Right, so this is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. You can see that I'm getting this torus by taking a circle in the yz plane centered at the point, maybe this is like the point zero two zero or something. So distance two along the y-axis. And that circle maybe has radius one. And that's why I picked two here, so that the circle is really right over here. And I'm rotating that around the z-axis. So if you think a bit, that's going to give you, um, if we give these these uh, coordinates names. So this angular coordinate here is going to be called theta and this one is going to be called phi. So let me first write the equation of this circle, just this circle in the yz plane. Right, so the point on that circle have zero x coordinate. Their y coordinate is going to be 2 plus cos theta and their z coordinate is going to be sine theta. And then I'm rotating that using a rotation matrix that fixes the z-axis and rotates by an angle phi around the z-axis. Let me... Um, move this over here and draw my matrix a bit bigger. It's going to be cos phi minus sine phi 0, 0, 1, sine phi cos phi 0, 0. Okay, if I multiply this matrix into this vector, I'm going to get some vector, which gives me a point in 3D depending on phi and theta, and that's what this map is going to be. You can multiply it out for yourself if you want. But certainly it's continuous. Right? This is, depends on theta and phi through cos and sine, and matrix multiplication is continuous. So, so this is also continuous, and by the same argument it's a homeomorphism, because this is a compact space, this is a Hausdorff space, because it's a subspace of a Hausdorff space. So in particular, T and T prime are homeomorphic. Okay, 
it's not R3, it's only equal to T prime, let's say T is only equal to T prime.